Hi, I'm Brian, N3EXA. This is the future of the Warminster Amateur Radio Club's repeater. It consists of multiple receivers. Here we have Motorola CDM 750s, four channel radios. One is a VHF, the rest are UHF, and they're receivers that are receiving various sites where there are link packages picking up your two meter transmission. Here we have a remote base radio that's used to link to the 440 repeater. Here we have the voter which picks the most quieting signal coming from the various sites. And this is the ARCOM controller. Here we have an MFJ DC power uh, control with fusing. We have a battery and we have a charging power supply. We also are going to have a slide drawer with weather radio so we can use the same weather report for, for turning the controller on to give a weather warning. Up top here we have a multi-coupler which is bringing in a single antenna feed from the UHF antenna through a preamp and then splitting it for the various UHF receivers. What's unique and nice about these radios is they're all computer programmable. And they're a far cry from the 1960s vintage radios, which we're using now. So modern radios, modern up-to-date equipment, bringing our system into the 20th century. This is the RCOM repeater controller. It has three ports, which allows you to have three transmitters, three receivers, and also has an auto patch function and other audio inputs. What's unique about this ARCOM controller is the availability of an RS-232 connection, which can hook right to our computer for programming. We have Windows-based software. It's the latest and greatest in controllers as compared to our first controller which I have here. This is our first controller which was a lot of hand wiring. We used a Majuri circuit board with an EEPROM, all hand wired, different power supplies, hand welded chassis. This is the EEPROM we used. So we're going a far cry from where we were back in the 80s. This is an LDG repeater voting system, RVS-8. It takes the audio signals and the carrier operated switch inputs from each of the receivers. Brings it into here, it selects the most quieting receiver, the receiver with the best signal to noise ratio and it picks that, that signal to be put into the controller to be retransmitted out the transmitter. It's, it's got a lot of circuits which we've added which we're going to be adding some more including a metering circuit and we're going to relocate it into a different enclosure. This way we, when we go to set the controls on the voter we use these meters we'll have a switch for each receiver to select each receiver and we'll adjust the noise pots and the, and the audio gain pot using these analog meters. Saves us from having to hook up a portable meter. And then the bottom part of the controller will be down here. This will all be in one enclosure. There's also some uh, audio attenuators we're going to add as well as uh, an ID board for IDing which input is being utilized. It'll be a hang uh, message. It'll be a CW identifier. Feeding the preamp for the UHF receivers is this DCI filter, which allows just signals within our link frequency spectrum to be amplified and run to the receivers. The controller is on a homebrew slide mount, which allows us to slide it in and out for adjustment without having to unscrew it from the 
from the rack. And we're going to do the same thing for the voting enclosure. This is one of the Midland weather radios. It has a place for an external antenna and alarm output. We'll wire the alarm output to the controller so if the same SAME alert system is triggered, the receiver will receive that, its alarm output will go to the controller and you'll get a weather warning uh, message out of the repeater. This is a General Electric Master 2 transmitter repeater cabinet. The radio is down here, it folds out. On our system, we'll be using just the transmitter, using the Motorola receiver, and we are using the high power amplifier, which is capable of 300 watts. We'll be left running at probably around 200 watts. It has full metering for adjusting the amplifier, high voltage power supply, long cooling fans, and all adjustments. This is the ARCOM RCP software, and it has every function of the controller here. Timers, courtesy tone, selections, macros, everything's got a macro for controlling so you can have a touch tone, you know, macro, so many digits of various numbers to control the functions for the controller. <laughs> Has a scheduler and a clock, you can set the clock right off your computer clock. You have your IDs, CW and voice. Various messages. For like I have link messages here. Transmitter on. Transmitter off. Various messages that we're using. We can uh, store DTMF. We have the auto patch. And various functionality for each port. So this is the software for the controller. I'm going to show you the software for the radios themselves. This is the software for the individual radios to allow you to select channel information, frequencies, bandwidth, there's also radio tuning software, which is a separate program. Utilizing programs like Log Me In will allow us to have a computer with the controller to allow us to make changes on the fly to messages and so forth on the, on the repeater, which we could never do before. So this will be a lot easier, all Windows-based software. Uh, from a person maintaining the equipment, it saves us a lot of trips out to the site and uh, makes our life a little easier having more modern equipment.